Okay, I'd like to take a few minutes just to take you through the new um, tools that are being upgraded um, from what most of us commonly refer to as um, WIMBA. Um, now, WIMBA has been acquired by a much larger company called Blackboard. Um, so the new tools are part of um, a UK company called Blackboard Collaborate. And there are two key tools that we're going to be using, um, particularly for the virtual class, uh, virtual exchange, French virtual exchange. Um, so I just want to go through the features of them so you feel a bit more familiar with them when we actually get started. So let's just switch my video off and we can get on um, with a quick tour. Okay, so the two um, tools that I'm focusing on here are Live Classroom and Pronto. These have been the way, ways that we've referred to them in the past. Um, they've been branded, this, the names are slightly different, but the functionalities are the same and in fact better. Um, so let's have a little look. First of all, an insight into the Blackboard Collaborate Live Classroom. Uh, we're more familiar with Wimber's Live Classroom. Uh, a lot of the features here are actually merged between Wimber's Live Classroom and Illuminate. Um, Illuminate was one of the major uh, virtual classrooms out there. And, and the merger is, is a very successful one, in my opinion, having um, trialed the Blackboard Collaborate room. Um, so let's just have a look at some of the features. So when you arrive in a room, over at the um, side here, uh, let's just point out some of these features. So at the, the top box here we've got audio and video content so if you've got several people in the room you'll see the webcam images of those people up to a maximum of six at a time I think um, you've also got the participants list here which will obviously expand if you've got lots and lots of participants and you've got the chat area here for text chat so these sort of activities generally were visible at the bottom of live classroom and they're here on the left, but as I'll show you in a minute, the geography of where they appear um, matters very little. Um, they contain, importantly, the vital sort of interactive elements of live classroom. Um, so you can chat, uh, you can also use the little, um, let's just put a few arrows to these, um, these little switches here. Um, to put in your emoticons, to put in, um, to raise your hand, uh, to, to yes and no. So all of these things make sure that you can very quickly convey how you're feeling and your students can quickly convey to you uh, how they're feeling without having to pass the microphone around to everybody. Uh, and those, the status of those will be reflected in the box. So that's a very important area here. Uh, another important area um, to look at, particularly for those people using a classroom for making archive uh, resources, there are the buttons up here uh, where you can see it says load content. Uh, let's just smile around those. So at the top right hand corner, um, the record button is the button for archiving and the load content is for uploading pictures, images, PowerPoint slides. Um, that will be processed very quickly for you um, to display in the main area here, which of course is the, um, is the whiteboard area. And we also have some whiteboard tools. Um, so let's just add a few more arrows to indicate them. Um, more sophisticated set of tools and more sophisticated in terms of the things that you can do and you can um, encourage uh, students to do within the room when you're uh, collaborating. Um, so we've got the usual things, the text and the shapes and the film shapes, etc. with these tools here. Uh, we have stamps, and the way I'm doing using Flaro stamps at the moment, they're underneath this second button at the top. Uh, screen grab, to grab an image of the screen and bring it into the whiteboard. And at the bottom, there's quite an exciting tool, which is a set of templates. So at the moment, the template on the back of the main whiteboard area is just a plain piece of paper. It could equally be a PowerPoint slide if you'd uploaded images or whatever. Um, but the templates here allow you to move into much more 
uh, complex backgrounds. So these could be um, graph paper, um, they can be musical notation paper, they can even be a blackboard, would you believe? Um, so sets of templates, uh, a map of the world that you can very quickly pull in um, and get people interacting around. So that, that's a really handy thing to have. Um, the tool at the top here as well is a selection tool. So that means that you can select things that are already on the slide or on the whiteboard and either fix them to the, to the um, background to make sure nobody can move them or you can select them and group them and reorganize them. That works really well in a brainstorming session, for example, where perhaps you've got all the students to type some text in, this little text um, icon here, um, and then you want to organize those, organize those ideas by dragging and dropping them and organizing them together. So a very sophisticated functionality. Um, the, main, uh, the main items are there, of course. I've focused on the whiteboard here, as you can see. It's at the top left as well, you can also see the links for app share. So that's the sharing your desktop or part of your desktop with everybody in the room. And for a web tour, so that's for leading people or taking them around uh, websites as well. Uh, and they follow you in the same way as we used to do in the uh, language labs. Um, okay, just moving on to the next slide, I just wanted to show you about the geography here of the room. So on the left-hand side, we had all the boxes. As you can see here, what I've done is pick them up and drag and drop them around the screen. And you can do that. You can personalize your screen. So you need to be familiar with moving through windows. Uh, but essentially, all you do is click on the frame, move each window to where you want it to be. Um, and so that can be completely um, tailored to where you want things to make the space work for you. And the students also can rearrange their, their screen. Um, so just to actually pull together the differences between a live classroom, as I've just been demonstrating, and an instant messaging tool, which we were about, are about to see. Um, so the live classroom, we're perhaps more used to because we've seen that um, used uh, for Japanese archive resources. We've seen it um, used for meeting. Um, some of you have actually been in the live classroom and tried it out. But essentially, it's an online space, pretty much an additional classroom. It just happens to be virtual. Uh, additional teaching space. Um, you can upload content to it in advance. Everything that happens within it can be archived and saved for review, um, downloaded by the students to uh, revisit. Um, and generally, it's not really used for one-to-one -one other than for demo purposes. It tends to be used for uh, many people to get together. There's no limit in terms of the number of people that can be in a live classroom uh, taking part in sessions that have had um, Two, three hundred people in. Um, so I'm not, not recommending it, but it can be done. On the right hand side here are some details about the EIM, the Enterprise in Instant Messaging System. And I'm going to show you a picture of that in just a second. Um, this is an informal collaborative space that has lots of the whiteboard, interactive whiteboard features that we've seen um, in live classroom as well. Uh, so it's runs as a program in the background when you're on your computer or whichever computers you've installed it to. And it, it, it connects to a database of the people who are in your class. So instant messaging is something that's used extensively by students. But this is a closed instant messaging service, so it's campus-based. Um, it only recognizes the people who are on your module. Um, and it gives you a quick access to contact somebody, perhaps because you've got a problem, perhaps because you can't find a resource, um, perhaps to do some last minute preparation before a, a lesson, um, or to uh, collaborate on a project. I think it'll be very useful in the virtual French exchange, um, and um, we will be piloting it extensively there. Um, it also has links into a live classroom. So if I were to make a distinction between the two, um, one is more formal than the other, um, with the instant messaging being exactly what it says, instant, quick way of um, contacting people, the relevant people for your course. So let's have a look at what that looks like on the screen. Um, I've been piloting 
this that you would have known as Pronto. Um, some of you will have known that because you've uh, piloted it with me. I've been piloting this, and David and I have found it particularly useful for very quickly getting in touch with each other wherever we are um, and making sure that we've uh, sorted out any, any issues or whatever. Um, so as you can see, the little screen here that opens once it's running on your machine um, gives you the status. Um, you update your own status with a little drop-down box here. So you may or may not be available. You can set that to also invisible if you wish to be invisible to others but still monitoring what's happening. Um, and that status is then reported to the other people within your class group who can simply then select your name and choose one of the many options for getting in touch. It could be simply text chat, like instant messaging you might be used to already in Facebook or um, MSN, or by using the more sophisticated whiteboard tools, um, the collaborative whiteboard tools as we've seen in live classrooms. Um, so it's even sharing a desktop as well if you, if you needed to. Um, so this is a very good way of making sure that the relevant people before a live classroom session are actually available, um, and even with a link at the bottom taking you straight into the classroom once you found everybody. Um, uh, so it's quite a neat way, if you like, of replicating the corridor outside the classroom. Okay, are we all ready? Right off we go. Um, so I hope that helps to make these two products clear and distinct in your mind, uh, but by far the best way, obviously use them um, so they become familiar to you.